So I want to take a second look at um, electrons, what shells they go into, and valence electrons. So we talked about already that we can think about each period being correlated to an electron shell. So this would be our period one first shell, um, period two a second shell of electrons, and period three a third shell of electrons. All right. So let's see if we can describe the shells and where the electrons are for phosphorus. So for phosphorus, I know that it's got 15 um, protons, 31 minus 15, so 16 neutrons, and then I have to have 15 electrons to match those 15 protons. All right. So as I figure out where those electrons go, um, I want to concretely show them to you with some coins here. Okay. So to get to phosphorus, I have one electron, two electrons. Each box correlates to an electron, okay? So in the first shell of electrons on this phosphorus atom, I have two electrons. And I could highlight that yellow just to say, hey, here's that first shell, and here's those two electrons, all right? As I keep going, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I just put eight electrons into that second shell. So if I draw that second shell of electrons here, now that second shell has eight electrons in it. And then I have to work my way all the way to phosphorus. So in the third shell, I put one, two, three, four, five. And so that third shell on phosphorus has five electrons in it. All right, what does this practically mean? Okay, look at a couple things. Five plus eight plus two, that is all of my electrons or dimes that are shown here, and that adds up to 15, right? 13 plus two is 15 electrons. Another way I could represent this is I can say, hey, this phosphorus has five outer shell electrons, so five valence electrons, one, two, three, four, five. Here's those five outer valence electrons. The rest of these we call core electrons. They're all in a little bit, all right? What if I want to look at valence electrons for silicon, okay? Silicon is one down, it has one less electron. So when I stop here, how many valence electrons do I have? One, two, three, four. So that would be silicon, one, two, three, four, all right? What if I'm looking at oxygen, okay? How many valence electrons does oxygen have? Well, I know it has eight electrons, right, because it has eight protons, but let's get rid of all these electrons and stop here at oxygen. It has eight electrons, see the dimes here, but only six of them are in the second shell, and so it has six valence electrons. That's here as a Roman numeral, and it's also one, two, three, four, five, six. I could also draw that here. Okay, finally, um, let's look at helium, okay? Helium and hydrogen. So helium has just this one shell of electrons, um, and so I could say it's got two protons, two neutrons, and it's got just that first shell of electrons, and in that first shell, it has two electrons, one, two, so there's those two. And because that's a small shell, um, instead of keeping those electrons unpaired, I would pair them up with each other, over here, if I'm drawing hydrogen, hydrogen now only has one valence electron. That's what these little markers are. So that would be hydrogen with one dot. And notice that one dot correlates to that one group number there. So the group number one tells me the valence electrons in the outer shell. And I represent that as a dot there. So I hope that gives you another perspective on looking for electrons using these little markers. And you can do that for anything. Hey, here's beryllium, has two in the outer shell. Um, so you can play around with that in working on where your electrons go.